Happy Tuesday, happy day six of 40. Uh, we are in Matthew chapter five, which is the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon ever preached. Uh, it's reported in Matthew five through seven. There's a parallel kind of, uh, sometimes referred to as a Sermon on the Plain, a lot of overlap recorded in Luke's gospel, the sixth chapter. Um, I am in the camp that thinks that Jesus gave this sermon on more than one occasion. Uh, it was sort of a standard keynote address and that uh, Matthew recorded one time, Luke recorded another. <clears throat> the artwork is um, um, a late 16th century piece by a Flemish uh, artist, uh, Jan Bruegel, and it currently is hanging in the Getty in LA. I've been there twice. Um, several things are worth noting in this one. It, there's a lot of people, obviously, if you're looking at the picture, a lot of people in that uh, painting. It's hard to find Jesus. That's perhaps there's something there. Eventually, he's the guy that has a halo. <laughs> so you can spot him for that reason. Um, you can see that uh, uh, there are people in the crowd not paying attention. Um, there's, a, there's some sort of... Um, comic or some, somebody that is sort of uh, uh, entertaining them. Um, it's also worth noting that the people are all dressed in 16th century clothes. This is perhaps on purpose, perhaps the artist knows that he's doing that. I mean, you can take an old story and put it into a contemporary form and you know that it, you know, I, I watched Les Miserables in a French setting, French 20th century setting. Uh, and everybody knows that, you know, watching it, that this is Les Miserables and it's been taken into this contemporary setting. I'm always a little suspicious that maybe the author didn't realize how much they are making the story about them, uh, how much Jesus looks like them. Again, we tend to do that. God made us in his image and ever since then we've been returning the favor. Our assumption is Jesus looks like us, thinks like us, votes like us, all of those things. So, let me read now from part of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter five, beginning with verse one. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to preach to them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad in that day. For great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now there's a number of things that could be and should be said about the Sermon on the Mount. Besides that, uh, Jesus gave it and it's the most famous sermon uh, ever preached anywhere. We could note that it is a, uh, it's a, in a sense, a commentary on the law we could note that his teaching style was unlike that of his contemporaries. He spoke, they noted, as one who had authority. He wasn't quoting all the other people and sort of building a case on the basis of them. He was appealing in a sense to his own authority. Uh, it's worth noting what he says here. <laughs> the, the, this, this whole idea is shocking. Uh, again, I, Jesus is more radical than Marx or Lenin or Nietzsche or pick your most radical person. Uh, by the way, I heard, you want to be a radical for Jesus? Uh, I heard this yesterday. Somebody said, give 10% of your money and don't watch TV. Uh, read books instead. And that will be a radical lifestyle. But anyway, Jesus says radical things here. Now, don't take from this that th these are rules that we're to follow. Like that I'm just somehow figure out how to go be meek or to be poor in spirit, right? This is a description of what happens when the world is turned upside down or perhaps more to the point when the world is turned right side up. Jesus is describing the values of his kingdom, which is really what we long for 
when we think about it. So my suggestion for your uh, task today, because each day I'm trying to give you a piece of art, a little reflection on the passage out of Matthew and something to do, I want to encourage you to go back and read the Sermon on the Mount. It starts in Matthew chapter 5. It's given by Jesus. Uh, I can't think of a better thing to do on this sixth day in Lent. Have a good day.